So we want to have just a short discussion some more on filters. We've talked a little bit about filters already. Uh, remember, the purpose of a filter is to eliminate a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so, for example, in this, this uh, slide here, we can see that these filters, which we might put on the front of our cameras, these filters eliminate particular colors. For example, this, this filter, which looks yellow, that's because it's eliminating blue, right? Letting the red and green come through. This filter, which looks cyan, is eliminating red. This magenta filter is letting the blue and red come through, but it's eliminating the green. Notice if you were to put all three filters on the end of your camera, you would, it would just be black because none of the light would go through. Now, remember, though, not all filters affect color. Some filters block other portions of the spectrum. I'll get to this. It's a good question. It's very common, if you were to go purchase a camera, let's say you were to go to Best Buy or it's about to say Circuit City. Those guys went out of business like eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but let's say you went to a Ritz camera or you know one of the camera stores and you purchased a camera. Actually, a lot of the times when you purchase a camera nowadays, there's a filter on the front of your lens. You just don't realize it's already there. It's typically an example of what's called a UV haze filter. UV meaning it probably blocks out what type of radiation? Ultraviolet. So it's an ultraviolet filter. It doesn't block visible light. It doesn't block blue or green or red. It blocks ultraviolet radiation. And what it does is it keeps your photos from becoming slightly overexposed because the ultraviolet radiation will actually overexpose your photos slightly. So that's an example of a filter that does eliminate a portion of the spectrum. Remember, that was the definition of a, of a, of a filter. It eliminates a portion of the spectrum, but it has no effect on color. Another example of a filter that you might have is an infrared filter. You might have a filter that, in, that filters out infrared radiation. Okay, does it, ultraviolet has a color to it? Nope, ultraviolet does not have a color. Why, why, is it, why are black lights called ultraviolet lights? And they, 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 That's a good question. So the, the question Dale's asking is, if you were to buy a black light, like the Halloween stores, for example, will sometimes sell black lights. Black lights are ultraviolet. Technically, a, a black light, the kind that you might purchase, they actually are emitting primarily ultraviolet, but they do emit just a little bit of visible light so that you know they're on. If it is a true UV light, you would not know it was on because you couldn't see anything, even though it was actually emitting UV. But the way UV lights are made nowadays they emit just a little bit of visible light, just so you know they're on. An example of a UV light that you might use, uh, a scorpion light. If you have a little flashlight, look for scorpions. Scorpions glow under UV light. So if you want to go out in your backyard and look for scorpions, you can turn that light on and shine it, and then if it hits the scorpion, it'll glow. Now, they do emit a little bit of visible light, and that's by design, by purpose, so that you know that they're at least going, that they're, they're actually shining. But UV, true UV, doesn't have a color. You can't see it. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. But now you said that um, the filter eliminates, it, does it eliminate the, the, uh, the movement of the radiation? Or, or the it radiation? eliminates a portion of the radiation that is vibrating in that wavelength. Okay. So, so what, would, what is it? What, if I didn't use a filter, how would that show up on my picture? Well, what can happen is the sensors that are in a digital camera, remember the CCD sensors? They react not only with visible light, but they also react a little bit with ultraviolet. And so when we're trying to control exposure, sometimes having a little bit extra UV light can actually make your photos come out a little bit too bright. So will you use a UV haze filter to get rid of that. UV haze filters are also especially helpful when you're photographing on, on overcast days. We have a lot of scattered ultraviolet in the, in the, the atmosphere. When you take photos under, under, uh, on overcast days, uh, your photos can turn out way, way too bright. And you don't realize it. Use a UV haze filter that will eliminate that. Another type of filter that doesn't have any effect on color is something called a neutral density filter. Neutral density filter, the best way to think about a neutral density filter is it's kind of like sunglasses for your camera. All it really does is it just cuts down all the light entering the camera so that it's not quite so bright. 
So if you were taking photos and it was really, really bright and sunny outside and you just needed to decrease the amount of light a little bit, then you'd use a neutral density filter. And again, just think about it like sunglasses for the front of your camera. They don't affect color. They just decrease the total radiation coming through the lens. Now there's one other type of filter I want to focus on, and that is what's called a polarized filter. Specifically, what a polarized filter eliminates is polarized light. Specifically, the artifacts in a photograph that a polarized filter is going to help you eliminate are glare and reflections that show up in your photo. Polarized lenses, there's a decent chance that many of you have polarized lenses in your eyeglasses or in your sunglasses. The sunglasses that I wear on a regular basis, the lenses are polarized. And what that does then is if I'm wearing those sunglasses outside in a bright sunny day, the glares and reflections that you get off of the surface of the road or, or the oncoming windshields of the cars driving, to, it cuts those down. The earliest use of those polarized lenses for eyewear was people who were like fishermen. If you were a fisherman, you, if you, were, you wanted to be able to cast your line in an area where the fish were, it would be good if you could kind of see down into the water. Well, the problem is if you're standing next to a river or stream, when the sunlight hits the surface of the water, it causes this reflection and glare. If you put polarized sunglasses on, it cuts that reflection or glare, allowing you to see down into the water. They're also used a lot by skiers, snowboarders, because it cuts down the reflection and glare off the surface of snow. Nowadays, it's pretty common to have a lot of lenses. Even the film that you put on the tint on your car nowadays is typically polarized too. We use polarized lenses in photography. What are we trying to get rid of with these polarized filters? Well, we're trying to get rid of reflections and glare. Let me show you an example of when we might use this. So if you look at these two photos here, these are two photographs, they're black and whites, but they're both taken of a puddle of water. So this is a puddle of water, and there are some leaves floating on the surface. Do you guys see that? Notice, if you look at the photograph on the left-hand side, if you look at the surface of the water, notice that you can see in the, in the pool of water, there's a reflection. Because what it is, is there's a puddle of water on the ground. The photographer is taking a photo down at that puddle of water, but there's a house in the background. And so you can see in the photo on the left, you can see the house showing up in the photo. But notice the photo on the right, you can't see the house anymore. It's not that the, photo that the photograph, the photographer rather, moved positions. It's not that the house moved, right? In fact, actually, if you look at the two photos, the leaves are in the same spots. The only difference between the photo on the left and the photo on the right is the photo on the right, the photographer put a polarizing filter on the front of the camera. So what do polarizing filters eliminate? Reflections and glare. In a crime scene situation, when would we need to get rid of reflections and glare? All right. Can you grab that light for me again? Rob, thank you. Okay, let's think about this. Um, if you are photographing a car accident, so we have two cars hit. We've got to photograph the identifying marks on the cars. So if you've got to identify the car, we're going to, of course, photograph the license plate. But what else are you going to take a photo of? The VIN number of the car. If, if you need to go out, so let's say your insurance agent calls you up and says, hey, I need the VIN number on your car. Where do you go look for it? Right. Most people, you can find it on the inside of the door, but most people usually look on, on the dashboard. If you look through your windshield, there's a, a, a piece of metal that has that VIN number stamped into it. Well, one of the things we photograph on a car when it's been in an accident is the VIN number, not just the one on the door. We also photograph the one on the dashboard. But when you take a photograph of it, you have to take a picture of it through the windshield. What happens sometimes when you go to take a photo through glass? <laughs> sometimes you get a reflection or glare in the photo. I see this all the time with people who are going on vacation and they're on a tour bus and they're, you know, they're, they're driving through New York, for example, and they see something cool. They go to take a photo of it and then they get a, a, a glare or reflection off of the window of the tour bus and they can't actually see what's outside. If you, if you simply used a polarizing filter, it would get rid of that reflection or glare. Um, if you needed to take a photo, so in this example, we have a puddle of water. What if I had a gun 
that was underneath a very thin layer of water. So maybe it's in a puddle. And if you go to take a photo of the gun underneath the water, it's hard to see. Well, if you use a polarizing filter, it'll get rid of the glare so you can see through the water to where that gun is. So you see the benefit of using these polarizing filters? <laughs> also, if what you're taking a photo of is really reflective, let's say we had blood spatter on this surface up here, right? So maybe there was some unfortunate victim standing here, and I took a baseball bat and just bludgeoned them to death, and we're getting splashes of blood. This dry erase board is very, very reflective. When you go to take a photograph of it, if you're not careful, keep in mind, blood spatters, the little droplets, are very small. If you go to take a photograph and you get a glare on that really reflective surface, it makes it hard to see those little droplets. If you use a polarizing filter, it'll get that glare out of there so that then you'll get a good photo. So again, what does a polarizing filter eliminate? Reflections and glare. Ultimately, what is the purpose of a filter? It is to eliminate a portion of the spectrum. Do polarizing filters affect color at all? No, they only affect polarized light. Make sense?